Alrighty, hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm outside of the Royal Exhibition Building, if you can see it behind me, and I'm at the Animaga Convention for my second year attending. I'm really excited, there's some really fun activities I wanna get into today. There's lots of great stuff I wanna do, I'm gonna go over it with you guys later, but first I'm gonna go inside and shoot some footage, check it out, and I'll see you guys in a bit. Okay, as you can see, I am home from Animaga now and it was crazy. I filled the day full of fun activities and I really enjoyed myself, probably more so than last year. There was just so much to do, I hardly ever felt like I had a free moment to sit and figure out what to do next because I was constantly go, go, go. You know how conventions are, if you've been to one, they're so hectic, it's hard to kind of find somewhere on my own that I could sit down and film. So I'm gonna to talk to you guys now about the convention and run through everything I did during the day and there's plenty of footage I shot so I'm gonna run that over the top. If you've watched any of my convention vlogs before you'll know the first thing you see when you walk into the car park is all of these cars decked out with anime artwork and paint jobs and they are absolutely incredible to see. This year there were several Love Live cars, the Love Live fans are incredibly passionate as many of you know. Um, there was a Fate car that was there last year there was a SSS Gridman car of Rika, which was pretty cool, and there was also a Animaga themed car all of itself, which they didn't have last year. Um, so that was really cool to see, and I always love seeing them, so I was sure to get plenty of shots of that. After that, the very first thing I did when I walked in was I saw one of the butler performances from the Maid Cafe. And I usually go to the maid cafes every single year because it's not really that expensive and it's a good opportunity to kind of sit down, have some lunch and have fun and enjoy what the maids have to offer. So I went and made a reservation and they were selling some little keychains so I bought three of the keychains there which I'll show you guys now. Two of them are of the mascots of Animaga and the third one is a dragon mate? <laughs> I have no idea. I'm also gonna throw up my Polaroid on screen now and I wanna thank my maid Aya. I know that's not your real name, but I had fun with her. Um, we played some games together, like board games and stuff. Last year I played Jenga, but this year I played, I don't know what it's called, but it's the one where you fish the fish and they're all, it runs on batteries and they all kind of snap around. You're trying to fish them out of the pond. Um, so I lost at that, I was pretty bad at that, but it's actually really hard. Um, but I had a lot of fun with that, so yeah, the Maid Cafe is always fun. I also stole the menu. <laughs> because I like to like grab things, kind of like souvenirs, um, to put... I have this little red box, I don't know if I've ever shown it, but I have this little red box that my sister gave me, and it's full of stuff from conventions and just little knickknacks that I have, just to kind of remember, and like have physical memories of stuff. Um, and I also tried to get my maid to steal things from the kitchen, like they had these, I don't know what you call them, they were, they were, they were put in tea, and they were attached to a tea bag, and they had the Animaga girls kind of like resting around the cup, and I tried to get her to steal them, but she said she couldn't, so. But I had really a lot of fun at the maid cafe. And that was the very first thing I did, I had a super early lunch, but after that I got to walk around and just kind of explore all of the floor that they have, set up all of the different booths and stalls and just like you'd imagine they had plenty of the anime shops like that sell figures and and like DVDs and merchandise and wall scrolls and bags and kind of whatever you wanted um, but they had much more of a, of a variety of stalls this year compared to last year for example they had the Crunchyroll booth there for the first time um, because they were also uh, sponsoring the convention and playing a premiere film, uh, which I'll get to at the end of this video. They had, Madman also had a booth there, which was pretty cool, and they had a little prize wheel that you could spin on a tablet and win different prizes according to what it stopped on. And so I had a go at this prize wheel and I 
didn't really win much. I think I got like the lowest thing, but I won some little stickers that are of the um, Anime Lab mascot of Mad Men. So they're another cool little thing that I'll put into my red box. But there was plenty of different stalls selling manga, comic books, pop vinyls, board games, cards. Um, there was also some clothing stalls there. And to give you an idea of the range, they had like traditional, um, a, tr a stall selling traditional yukata and kimono um, fabric that you could literally buy one and get fitted at the stall, which was crazy. But then on the other side of the spectrum, they had Living Lude, which I've seen there every year, and they sell kind of hentai and eroge um, shirts and jumpers with, you know, <laughs> like, you, you can tell by just checking out the footage what it is, like, I didn't buy any, but I think they're also cool in their own way. And then apart from the business stalls, they also have Artist Alley, which is filled with indie artists and designers and just creators of all sorts of cool things. And this year I found some incredible booths with artists that made some amazing artwork and I really appreciated it more than I've ever appreciated it before. I was, I spent a lot of time just kind of wandering around, talking to people um, about their artwork and checking out their artwork. Um, a few that jumped to mind, there was one particular artist who was doing a lot of like Sailor Moon cards and prints and her artwork was just phenomenal and I could hardly film the booth. There was constantly people around buying stuff, talking to her and yeah, like I hardly got any footage because it was so busy. There was another one that did little Sackboy plushies of anime characters and comic book characters and they did so many. Um, they were really, really cool and I was thinking about buying a few. But again, there was a massive variety of different types of artwork. People were doing almost like tattoo artwork and um, it was really, really cool. I very much enjoyed walking around and one thing that I found really funny was the further you went along Artist Alley, the more like seedier, the <laughs> I'm not even kidding, the seedier the lighting got, like it was almost like a pink and purple haze by the end of it. And I'll throw some footage up to show you guys just how like hazy it was. It was really bizarre, it was dark. And that's like the further in you got, it just got darker and seedier with this purple hazy light. Um, which was really funny, so there was that. And apart from that, there was also a little artist area where there was a pin-up thing on the wall where you could go and draw whatever you want. Um, there was tables set up and you could go and draw. Not that I would, but I'm sure like people, if they want to just chill out and do that, that's really cool. Um, but there was also a little stand where you could make your own pin badge and I decided to do that. There was three different templates you could choose or you could choose your own. Um, I chose the template of Animagus 2 mascots because they had one of the individual girls or one of them together. And I literally found a table with no pencils or textures and I went around and kind of scavenged like pencils and textures, just none of the colours fit. I literally took whatever I could find that people weren't using. I quickly coloured them in, I took it to the guy and he had um, the stamping machine, I do not know how it works, but it's pretty simple. He took the little paper, um, put it onto the badge and stamped it down and this was the result. So I'm really happy with that. It's something that I made and again, a cool little knickknack that I can keep um, as a memory of the convention. Now, of course, being a convention, they also had some guests they brought over from Japan and a few other countries, but the main ones that I was excited to see were the voice actresses, the seiyus from Japan, and they had two that they brought over, and the first one was Tetsuya... I have to read the name. Kakihara. Tetsuya Kakihara, and he is most known for playing Natsu in Fairy Tale, Simon in Gurren Lagann, which Gurren Lagann is one of my favourite anime, so I was really excited to see him. Um, it was very interesting watching his panel because he was actually born and raised in Germany, and pretty much didn't speak any Japanese up until the age of about 18 when he went over back to Japan. And that, while he was learning to actually speak his language that he originated from, he was also like pursuing being a voice actor. So pretty incredible story. And I think for a lot of people who aspire to be a voice actor, whether in, you know, English language or Japanese or any other language, um, very inspiring, I guess, that he literally was in a different country and didn't even know Japanese until he was like 17 or 18 and learned it and was able to get into the industry. So he was really cool to see. And the other seiyuu they had was female voice actress Asami Sanada and she's probably most well known for playing Kurumi from Data Live, 
Vita from Magical Girl Lyrical Nanoha, um, the teacher in k -On, but she's been around for a long time. She's been voicing roles since the 90s. I think her debut was in DigiCarrot, which I actually like that series. It's a fun little otaku comedy. And she was also really good to watch. It's always really good to get people's perspectives from within the um, industry. Uh, she did a few little voiceovers and stuff like that, um, so that was great to see them. They also had a few members of Key, which is a visual novel group, most notably for creating Angel Beats, Clanad, uh, Little Busters, Canon, Air, there's a few they've made, um, but they are heavily involved in the anime as well as the game production, so they kind of gave their perspectives from the industry as well. Um, I'm not that big of a fan of many of the key works. I'd have to say my favourite would be Angel Beats. I do like that show, but I'm certainly not a fan of any of the other shows like even Clannad or Little Busters just never really got into them and I haven't seen Charlotte um, or any of their more recent work. But they also had a stall set up where you could buy some of the games and official merchandise and uh, Naga, who was the illustrator, did a drawing on the stage, so that's always really cool to see. Um, so there was that, if you're a fan of Key. Now, just before I get into the final couple of things I want to mention, um, something really cool happened that was a first for me. And as I was sitting by the stage and I was watching one of the performances that had just ended, a subscriber came up to me and it was just really surprising and really amazing to meet Philip. So if you're watching this, Philip, um, thank you so much for coming up to me. Uh, it really meant a lot to me and it left the biggest smile on my face for the whole day. Um, and we shot a little bit of footage together, so I'm going to cut to that now. Okay guys, um, I've been sitting here at the Animaga stage and one of my subscribers, Philip, came up and said hello. Hey man, how are you? So I thought I'd get him out of the camera. Um, I guess, what are you most looking forward to today at Animaga, Philip? Oh, uh, not going to lie, I came here for you, but... <laughs> this is the first time I've met a subscriber and I'm honestly so humbled to meet you, man. It's, it's really, really I'm just, cool. I'm just happy to be here. I'm happy to experience, like, another place. Because I only knew about Mad Men, yeah. but you know, coming here because I heard it from you, yeah. check out your channel, I love yeah, the content, sure. I just had to come down. That, that's awesome man, see, see Philip found the convention from, from my channel which is crazy and again like I'm so humbled and flattered no. and it's really good to meet you Philip, no, honestly, you're a legend man. <laughs> so just before I show you guys some of the goodies I got at the convention, the final thing that I mentioned earlier was Crunchyroll were sponsoring the convention and they brought over the premiere for Yojo Senki, aka the saga of Evil Tanya, the new movie that was the Australian premiere, which hasn't aired anywhere else, so I actually have a pretty big fan of the series, so of course I was going to watch it. There were some really good action scenes in it. If you don't know what it is, just briefly, it is a Japanese businessman is transported back into kind of this World War I fantasy world, but he's stuck in the body of a eight or ten she might be by the time of the movie, a ten-year-old girl who has to fight as an officer in the war. And so it's pretty brutal, it certainly doesn't glamorise or romanticise war, it's um, yeah, people die, people, you know, get brutally injured and stuff like that, so it's a cool little movie, it's a cool little series, but yeah, I thoroughly enjoyed the movie as well. Now, let's cut to the things I got, alright? Alright. Okay, so I only really bought one, I bought a few things, but only really a bag of stuff. Um, I didn't buy any figures, even though they had some pretty good prices there, I just didn't really have the room to carry them, and like I said, I had no time to kind of do anything. But something I did get, because I had a ticket to see the movie, okay, I'm gonna have to go way back here. It was the wrong side all along, that's the problem. Because I had a ticket to see the new Makoto Shinkai film, Weathering With You, I received this enormous poster, which I have no room on my walls to display. Um, but yeah, I saw that film and I pretty much am gonna go on record to say that I thought it was better than Your Name. Um, it came just after Your Name and the characters from Your Name even play minor roles in the film, so they do appear in it. Um, but yeah, I enjoyed it slightly a little bit more than Your Name. I think they're both amazing films, uh, but Weathering With You, it just hit me in a more relatable and realistic way. Um, and I definitely recommend that for fans of Your Name or A Silent Voice. Next, they had some official merchandise from Animaga that I bought from the booth. First is this, um, I don't know what you call these. It's like a neck thing that you put <laughs> I sound like an idiot. It's you you put some um, tags on. It goes around your neck, all right? 
Someone in the comments let me know what these are called, but it has their two mascots on the front there. And yeah, it's just something to have. They have um, a t-shirt for the convention, which um, they don't think they had last year. It's pretty basic and I, ha I got a large and I'm glad I actually got a large because I wanted a medium, but they didn't have any, but they seem pretty small. Um, so yellow is a very unique choice, but it's something that I can wear around. Um, so that's cool, you know, I always like to get the t-shirts. And finally, I got a couple... <laughs> finally, I got a couple more um, keychains of the mascots of Annie Marga, who I honestly cannot remember their names for the life of me. But these are different to the main cafe ones I checked, so I had to pick them up. And on the back, they have this unique kind of gold and uh, colour design. Now, literally apart from that, I just have a pile of things that I picked up from random booths. So this is from the Crunchyroll booth. Um, they were advertising the Rising of the Shield Hero, which is one of their um, newer isekai, I suppose. So I got a couple of postcards as well from that booth. Um, they had a card fight vanguard play area set up and literally I think you're only supposed to get one but I kept walking past and they just kept giving them to me. So I got two of these little card fight vanguard cards and they have some nice artwork on them so happy to have them. <laughs> I, I just picked up some kind of business cards from different places. This is Luck of Kings and Living Lude, as I mentioned earlier. This was my voice. This was supposed to be given out at the end of the scavenger hunt, which I have no idea if it even happened, but I missed out on it, but they, I got a card anyway. And then there was um, simply the guide for the festival, which just includes some information on the different guests that, was, that were there, map, some timetables, and not much else, honestly. Um, but of course, if you're there, you just pick up a few of those. And the final thing um, that I got, which I forgot to mention, was I actually got my fortune told at the Annie Marga Maid Cafe. And what did I get? I got a fun fortune for you below. Not so fun. Bad luck. Big cross. If you forgot something today, you can remember it for tomorrow. Unless it's Sunday, it's already too late. Your lucky item is takoyaki. Well, takoyaki was not my lucky item, and I'll tell you why. I didn't think anything of this, um, I don't really believe in fortune telling or anything like that, but later on that day, as I was going home, someone had, <laughs> this is unbelievable, something happened to me which I'm laughing at now, but it was not funny at the time. When I got back to my car from the train station, someone had completely siphoned all of the fuel from my car, and so when I tried to start my car, it was bone empty. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I don't mean to end this video on a bad note, but yeah, someone stole the fuel out of my car to the point where I could not even start it. Um, so I had to call for help and eventually I did get home, um, but that was not fun at the time, but I guess it's kind of funny looking back at. But apart from that, I had fun at the Animaga convention and I'm definitely looking forward to the Mad Men convention coming up in a couple of weeks. Um, thank you guys for watching this video. If you're at the Mad Men convention, be sure to say hi. And I'll see you guys in the next video, which will be an unboxing!